Simon, also known as the Apostle Peter, stands out as one of the most prominent and passionate figures in the New Testament. As one of the first disciples of Jesus, Peter left behind his life as a fisherman to become a central leader in the early church. His story is filled with moments of faith, doubt, and redemption, from walking on water to denying Jesus, and later being restored by him. In this video, we will delve into the life and legacy of the Apostle Peter, exploring his transformation from an ordinary man to a pillar of Christian faith, and how his experiences and teachings continue to inspire believers around the world. Join us on this journey through the pages of the Bible to uncover the incredible story of the Apostle Peter. Simon, better known as Peter, was a fisherman from Bethsaida, a town in the region of Galilee, situated by the Sea of Galilee. During Peter's time, Galilee was under Roman rule, which brought with it significant political and social tensions. Heavy taxation and the presence of Roman soldiers were constant reminders of the oppressive yoke. The Jews of Galilee, like those in other parts of Judea, eagerly awaited the arrival of the Messiah, who they believed would restore the kingdom of Israel and liberate them from Roman occupation. Fishing was a common and essential occupation for the local economy. It required not only physical labor but also a deep understanding of the lake, its currents, and weather patterns. Peter, along with his brother Andrew and their partners James and John, worked diligently to support their families through this trade. Peter was introduced to Jesus through his brother Andrew. Andrew was a disciple of John the Baptist and had heard of Jesus as the Lamb of God. After encountering Jesus, Andrew brought his brother Simon to meet the teacher. John 1 verse 42 records that upon seeing Simon, Jesus said, You are Simon, son of Jonah. You will be called Cephas, which means Peter. This name change was significant, as Peter means rock, foreshadowing the crucial role Peter would play in the foundation of the church. One day, while Peter and his fellow fishermen were working on the Sea of Galilee, Jesus approached them. They had spent the entire night fishing without catching anything. Jesus asked them to cast their nets again into the water. Despite their doubts, Peter obeyed, and to their astonishment, they caught such a large number of fish that their nets began to break. Struck by this miracle, Peter fell at Jesus' feet, acknowledging his own sinfulness and Jesus' holiness. Luke 5 verse 8 recounts Peter's reaction. When Simon Peter saw this, he fell at Jesus' knees and said, Go away from me, Lord, I am a sinful man. Jesus then reassured Peter, saying, Don't be afraid, from now on you will fish for people. Peter, along with his brother Andrew, James, and John, immediately left their nets and followed Jesus. This act of leaving everything behind to follow Jesus marked the beginning of a radical transformation in Peter's life. His immediate response and willingness to abandon his previous life reflect a deep faith and openness to God's calling. After accepting Jesus' call, Simon began his transformation into Peter. Jesus saw in him a potential that even Simon himself could not have imagined. The new name Jesus gave him, Peter, or Cephas in Aramaic, meaning rock, symbolized the solidity and stability he would come to represent in the church. This transformation was not immediate or without challenges, but Jesus was committed to shaping Peter into a solid and reliable leader. During a storm on the Sea of Galilee, the disciples saw Jesus walking on the water toward them. Peter, full of faith, asked Jesus to allow him to walk toward him on the water. Jesus told him to come, and for a brief moment, Peter walked on water. However, when he felt the wind and saw the waves, he began to sink and cried out to Jesus for help. This event taught Peter about the importance of maintaining faith and trusting in Jesus, even in the midst of life storms. Matthew 14 verses 30-31 narrates the event, but when he saw the wind, he was afraid and, beginning to sink, cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You have little faith, he said, why did you doubt? From the beginning, Peter stood out as a natural leader among the disciples. He was bold, passionate, and willing to speak on behalf of others. His strong personality and readiness to act quickly made him a prominent leader. Peter was often the first to ask questions, express his faith, and take risks, as seen in his attempt to walk on water. Jesus recognized Peter's leadership and prepared him for an important role in the church. 
despite his flaws and mistakes, Jesus entrusted Peter with significant responsibilities. Peter was one of the three disciples closest to Jesus, along with James and John, and was present at key moments in Jesus' ministry. One of the most crucial moments in Peter's life occurred in Caesarea Philippi. Jesus asked his disciples who people said he was. The responses varied, mentioning John the Baptist, Elijah, or one of the prophets. Then Jesus asked his disciples directly, But what about you? Who do you say I am? Peter, with his characteristic zeal, answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. This confession was a significant moment, as it recognized Jesus not just as a prophet, but as the promised Messiah and the Son of God. Jesus responded to Peter's confession with a powerful promise, Blessed are you, Simon son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by my Father in heaven. And I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock, I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. This declaration established Peter as a fundamental pillar in the future church. Jesus also gave Peter the keys to the kingdom of heaven, symbolizing spiritual authority and responsibility. Shortly after Peter's confession, Jesus took Peter, James, and John up a high mountain. There, Jesus was transfigured before them, his face shone like the sun, and his clothes became as white as the light. Moses and Elijah appeared and spoke with Jesus. Peter, overwhelmed by the vision, suggested building three shelters for Jesus, Moses, and Elijah. While he was speaking, a bright cloud covered them, and a voice from the cloud said, This is my son, whom I love, with him, I am well pleased. Listen to him. The transfiguration was a visual and audible confirmation of Jesus' divinity and mission. The disciples, terrified, fell face down on the ground. Jesus approached them, touched them, and told them to get up and not be afraid. This experience strengthened Peter's faith and that of the other disciples, giving them a glimpse of Jesus' glory and the reality of the kingdom of God throughout his time as a disciple. Peter was a first-hand witness to many of Jesus' remarkable miracles, each one demonstrating the divine power and deep compassion of his Master. These miracles not only solidified Peter's faith but also deepened his understanding of Jesus' mission and the nature of the kingdom of God. One such instance is recorded in Mark 1 verses 30-31, where it is mentioned, Simon's mother-in-law was lying in bed with a fever, and they immediately told Jesus about her. He went to her, took her hand and helped her up. The fever left her, and she began to wait on them. These miraculous events left a profound impact on Peter's spiritual journey, reinforcing his belief that Jesus was truly the Son of God. Through witnessing these acts, Peter learned vital lessons about the kingdom of God, a kingdom where faith, compassion, and divine power are at work to transform lives. During the Last Supper, Jesus shared the sobering news with his disciples that he would soon be arrested and put to death. In that pivotal moment, he also predicted that all his disciples would abandon him. Peter, known for his courage and loyalty, passionately declared that he would never deny Jesus, even if everyone else did. However, Jesus foretold that Peter would deny him three times before the rooster crowed. Matthew 26 verses 33-34 recounts, Peter replied, Even if all fall away on account of you, I never will. Truly I tell you, Jesus answered, this very night, before the rooster crows, you will disown me three times. That same night, Jesus was arrested in the Garden of Gethsemane, causing the disciples to scatter in fear. Despite his earlier resolve, Peter followed Jesus at a distance, eventually entering the courtyard of the high priest. As he waited, a servant girl recognized him and accused him of being with Jesus of Galilee. Fearing for his life, Peter denied knowing Jesus. As the night progressed, he was confronted two more times, and each time, he vehemently denied any association with Jesus. Matthew 26 verse 75 describes Peter's realization, Then Peter remembered the word Jesus had spoken, Before the rooster crows, you will disown me three times. And he went outside and wept bitterly. After Jesus' resurrection, Peter was burdened with guilt and remorse for his denial of his master. Yet, Jesus, in his infinite mercy, did not leave Peter in despair. In a profound encounter at the Sea of Galilee, as described in John 21 verse 14, 
This was now the third time Jesus appeared to his disciples after he was raised from the dead. During a private and deeply meaningful conversation, Jesus asked Peter three times if he loved him. Each time, Peter affirmed his love, though his heart was heavy with the memory of his past denials. John 21 verse 17 recounts, The third time he said to him, Simon son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him the third time, Do you love me? He said, Lord, you know all things, you know that I love you. Jesus said, Feed my sheep. Peter's denial and subsequent restoration highlight the profound depth of Jesus' grace and forgiveness. Despite failing at a critical moment, Peter was not cast aside. Instead, Jesus offered him a path to redemption and renewal, demonstrating that his love and purpose for Peter were unwavering. Following Jesus' ascension, Peter emerged as a leading figure in the early church in Jerusalem. His leadership was pivotal in the church's formative days when believers frequently gathered for prayer, teaching, and fellowship. Peter played a crucial role in guiding and strengthening the young Christian community, even as it faced a hostile and dangerous environment. On the day of Pentecost, Peter stood up to deliver a powerful sermon after the Holy Spirit descended upon the believers. Inspired and filled with the Spirit, Peter explained the significance of the recent events and boldly proclaimed that Jesus, whom they had crucified, was the risen Messiah. His message was so compelling that about 3,000 people converted and were baptized that day, marking an explosive growth for the nascent church. Acts 2 verse 14 records, Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd, Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you, listen carefully to what I say. As the church expanded, new challenges and controversies arose, particularly regarding the inclusion of Gentiles, or non-Jews, in the Christian community. Peter, one of Jesus' twelve apostles, performed several significant miracles after Jesus' ascension. These miracles were powerful demonstrations of God's power working through him and served to bolster the faith of believers and draw more people to the gospel. One of Peter's most famous miracles occurred shortly after Pentecost. As Peter and John were going to the temple to pray, they encountered a man who had been lame from birth, begging for alms. Acts 3 verses 6-7 describes the moment, Then Peter said, Silver or gold I do not have, but what I do have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk taking him by the right hand, he helped him up, and instantly the man's feet and ankles became strong. In another significant event within the early church, a man named Ananias, along with his wife Sapphira, sold a piece of property but secretly kept back part of the proceeds while pretending to donate the entire amount. Guided by the Holy Spirit, Peter confronted Ananias, revealing that he had not lied to men but to God. Ananias immediately fell dead, and later, his wife suffered the same fate after repeating the lie. This event, recounted in Acts 5 verses 3-4, served as a stark reminder of the seriousness of integrity within the church. Then Peter said, Ananias, how is it that Satan has so filled your heart that you have lied to the Holy Spirit and have kept for yourself some of the money you received for the land? Didn't it belong to you before it was sold? And after it was sold, wasn't the money at your disposal? What made you think of doing such a thing? You have not lied just to human beings, but to God. You have not lied to men, but to God. The fame of Peter as a healer quickly spread, and people began bringing the sick and laying them in the streets with the hope that Peter's shadow might fall on them as he passed by. Many were healed from various ailments and delivered from evil spirits because of the faith and power that manifested through Peter. In the city of Joppa, a disciple named Tabitha, also known as Dorcas, passed away. The believers, knowing Peter was nearby, sent for him. In Acts 9 verses 39-40, it is narrated that Peter, rising up, went with them, and upon arriving, they brought him to the upper room where all the widows surrounded him, weeping and showing the garments and robes that Dorcas had made while she was with them. Then, Peter sent everyone out of the room, knelt down, and prayed. Turning to the body, he said, Tabitha, arise. She opened her eyes, and upon seeing Peter, she sat up. In Lydda, Peter encountered a man named Aeneas, who had been paralyzed for many years. Peter told him that Jesus Christ healed him, and Aeneas immediately got up. 
this miracle had a profound impact on the region, leading many to turn to the Lord. These miracles not only demonstrated God's power working through Peter but also validated his authority as an apostle and leader in the early church. The miracles drew many to the Christian faith and strengthened the community of believers. Peter's life as a leader of the church is a testimony to the transformative power of the Holy Spirit and God's ongoing work in the world. The Council of Jerusalem, held around 49 AD, was a crucial moment in early church history. Peter played a vital role in this council, advocating for the inclusion of Gentiles without requiring them to follow Mosaic law. Peter shared his experience with Cornelius, a Roman centurion, and how the Holy Spirit had descended upon him and his family, confirming that God made no distinction between Jews and Gentiles. His testimony helped resolve the dispute and establish that salvation was available to all through the grace of Jesus, without the need to fulfill the requirements of Jewish law. In Acts 15 verse 7, it is recounted that after much debate, Peter stood up and said, Brothers, you know that some time ago God made a choice among you that the Gentiles might hear from my lips the message of the gospel and believe. After the Council of Jerusalem, Peter continued his mission of preaching the gospel beyond the borders of Jerusalem. Although much of his ministry focused on the Jewish community, Peter also traveled to different regions to share the message of Christ. It is believed that he visited Antioch, Corinth, and Rome, strengthening churches and encouraging believers. Tradition holds that Peter eventually reached Rome, where he played a crucial role in the Christian community. There, his leadership and testimony were fundamental to the growth of the church in one of the most important cities of the Roman Empire. While there is no direct biblical record of his activities in Rome, writings from church fathers and other historical sources support this tradition. Peter's leadership in the early church reflects his evolution from a fisherman to a foundational pillar of Christianity. Through his courage, wisdom, and faithfulness, Peter helped guide the church in its early steps and resolve critical theological and practical issues. His role in the Council of Jerusalem and his mission beyond Jerusalem underscore his commitment to the unity and expansion of the gospel. Peter is credited as the author of two epistles in the New Testament, 1 Peter and 2 Peter. These letters were addressed to Christians scattered across various regions of the Roman Empire who were facing persecution and challenges due to their faith. Peter's epistles are an invaluable source of teaching and exhortation, offering guidance and encouragement to believers in difficult times. In 1 Peter 1 verse 3, it is written, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to His abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. 1 Peter focuses on hope and perseverance amidst suffering. Peter urges believers to stand firm in their faith despite trials and tribulations, reminding them that as followers of Christ, they are strangers and pilgrims in this world, called to live holy and exemplary lives. Peter emphasizes the living hope that believers have through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. This hope gives them the strength to endure trials and remain faithful. In 1 Peter 1 verse 6, it is written, In this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while, if need be, you have been grieved by various trials. Peter exhorts believers to live holy lives, reminding them that they have been redeemed with the precious blood of Christ and are called to reflect His holiness in all their actions. In 1 Peter 1 verse 15, it is written, But as He who called you is holy, you also be holy in all your conduct. Peter encourages believers to view suffering as an opportunity to share in Christ's sufferings and glorify God. He assures them that their tested faith is of great value and will be rewarded. In 1 Peter 4 verse 13, it is written, But rejoice to the extent that you partake of Christ's sufferings, that when His glory is revealed, you may also be glad with exceeding joy. 2 Peter addresses the need for spiritual growth and warns against false teachers. Peter emphasizes the importance of knowing and remembering the truths of the gospel and living productive and effective lives in the knowledge of Christ. Peter urges believers to add to their faith virtue, knowledge, self-control, perseverance, godliness, brotherly kindness, and love. This growth in virtue is essential for being effective and productive in their knowledge of Jesus Christ. In 2 Peter 2 verse 1, it is written, 
but there were also false prophets among the people, even as there will be false teachers among you, who will secretly bring in destructive heresies, even denying the Lord who bought them, and bring on themselves swift destruction. Peter reaffirms the promise of Christ's return and encourages believers to live godly and expectant lives, knowing that the Lord will fulfill His promises. In 2 Peter 3 verse 10, it is written, But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens will pass away with a great noise, and the elements will melt with fervent heat, both the earth and the works that are in it will be burned up. Peter's epistles had a profound impact on the early church, providing encouragement and guidance during times of persecution and challenge. His teachings on hope, holiness, suffering, and vigilance against false teachers helped shape the faith and practice of early Christians. In 1 Peter 5 verse 12, it is written, I have written to you briefly, exhorting and testifying that this is the true grace of God in which you stand. Christian tradition holds that Peter died as a martyr in Rome during the persecution of Christians under Emperor Nero around 64 AD. According to these traditions, Peter was condemned to death for his faith and, like Jesus, was sentenced to be crucified. However, Peter, feeling unworthy to die in the same manner as his Lord, requested to be crucified upside down. His request was granted, and thus he met his end in a final act of humility and devotion to Christ. In John 21 verses 18-19, it is written, When you are old, you will stretch out your hands, and another will gird you and carry you where you do not wish. This he spoke, signifying by what death he would glorify God. Throughout his life, Peter demonstrated passionate faith and a willingness to learn and grow, even through his mistakes. His denial of Jesus, followed by his restoration and renewed leadership, offers a powerful example of God's redeeming grace. His teachings on hope, holiness, and perseverance in faith have shaped the Christian understanding of spiritual life. Moreover, his epistles provide an invaluable resource for the teaching and edification of the church. Peter is seen as a symbol of apostolic authority and the continuity of Christ's teaching. His figure has also been an inspiration for efforts toward unity and ecumenism within Christianity. His leadership and role as a bridge between different groups within the early church serve as a model for reconciliation and unity among diverse Christian denominations. The life of Simon Peter is one of the most fascinating and transformative stories in the Gospels and the New Testament. From his humble beginnings as a fisherman on the Sea of Galilee to his role as one of the most prominent leaders of the early church, Peter's life offers profound lessons of faith, repentance, leadership, and perseverance. Peter's legacy is one of unwavering faith, courage and adversity, and humility in the face of his own limitations. His life teaches us that discipleship is not a path of perfection without failures but a journey of growth, learning, and constant reliance on God's grace. Peter showed that true Christian leadership is based on serving and shepherding others, reflecting the love and compassion of Jesus. The story of Simon Peter challenges us to respond to Jesus' call with faith and obedience, to recognize our failures and seek repentance, and to embrace the restoration and purpose that God has for us. Like Peter, we are called to be fishers of men, sharing the gospel and leading with humility and love. His life is a testimony that, although we may fall, God's grace is always available to lift us up and guide us in our walk with Him. May the life of Peter inspire and strengthen our own faith, reminding us that in Christ, we are called, redeemed, and empowered for great things in God's kingdom.